after the hit, but did come back. On the next play, Titus Dixon took the handoff on a reverse and got to the three for a gain of 29 yards. On the next play, Gonzi went in for a touchdown. Clem added the point after, and Troy State led 17 to 6 at the half. The Trojans took the second half kickoff and drove 80 yards in eight plays. Tony Young went in from the 19 to put Troy up 24 to 6. With Troy State up 24 to 14 in the fourth quarter, the defense set up the clinching touchdown. Running back Keith Torrance coughs up the ball. And the Trojans, Mitch Parnell, falls on it at the Winston-Salem seven-yard line. On the first play from there, the offensive line did a magnificent job, and Tony Jackson did some determined running as he punched it in. Clem's point after made it 31 to 14 with 13:49 left in the game. The Trojans added two more touchdowns in a 45 to 14 first-round playoff win. Round two took the Trojans to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida against the Knights of Central Florida and their highly touted passing game. But the Trojans responded. Central Florida took the lead with 12 seconds left in the first quarter on an Ed O'Brien 41-yard field goal. A Knight fumble set up the Trojans' first touchdown of the second quarter. Knight quarterback Darren Slack keeps is hit by Gerald Travis, fumbles, and Gary Pimenta recovers at the Trojan 44. Three plays later, Turk breaks clear and races 54 yards for the touchdown. Clem added the extra point, and Troy State had a 7-3 lead with 11.54 to go in the half. On the kickoff, return man Reggie Edwards is popped by Thomas Miller and Gary Blackwell. He fumbles, and Freddie Taylor falls on it at the Knights' 33-yard line. A clipping penalty moved the Trojans back to the 43, and on third and 17 from the 40, Turk hit Tommy Dugash, who makes a nice run with good blocking to pick up a first down at the Central Florida 18. On the next play, Turk fakes the reverse to Dixon and hits tight end Mike Kelly for the score. With Clem's point after, the Trojans led 14-3 with 10-36 left in the half. The Trojans' second pass interception of the game set up Clem for a field goal with 4.44 left in the half, and that gave the Trojans a 17-3 lead. Doug Mims ended a Central Florida threat late in the half when he picked off this pass in the end zone. Troy State had a 17-3 lead at the half. Another fumble set up the Trojans' clinching touchdown. Doug Paris on the recovery at the Central Florida 41-yard line. The Trojans got to the one on this pass from Turk to Harris. On the next play, Turk took it in with 26 seconds left in the third quarter. Clem made it 24-3 at that point. The Trojans went on to a 31-10 win and earned a trip to Florence, Alabama and the national championship game. The date was December the 12th. The day was absolutely perfect for football. Sunny skies and temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. The opponent was Portland State. Both teams had 11 one on one records and both could score points. The game started out in Troy State's favor. The Trojans forced the Vikings to punt on their first series. Freddie Thomas blocked Mike Erickson's punt and the Trojans were in business at the Viking 42. The Trojans moved to the nine, but on third and six, Turk's pitch to Mitch Lewis was short, and the Vikings recovered. The Trojans were in good shape late in the quarter when Kerry Brooks picked off Chris Crawford's pass. The Trojans had it at the Portland State 20-yard line. On third down from the 16, Turk is popped by Kevin Wolfo. The ball pops loose, but Mike is able to scramble back for it and recovers at the 27. Ted Clem came on to kick a 43-yard field goal, and Troy State had the lead 3-0 with 3.44 left in the opening quarter. Portland State took the lead early in the second quarter when Tommy Johnson went in from the three. With the point after, Portland State led 7-3. Troy State threatened again. Titus Dixon took the reverse and got to the Vikings 23 after a gain of 40 yards. But on third and inches from the third team, Turk keeps and fumbles. The Vikings recover and the drive is stopped. 
A big defensive series by the Trojans kept the game from getting out of control. Portland State had the ball with 54 seconds left in the half at the Trojan three after a blocked punt. Curtis Delgado is nailed for a three-yard loss by Pimenta, David Summerall, and Chipman. Great coverage by the Trojans forced Crawford to throw one away on second down. On third down, Crawford tries for tight end Barry Naon in the end zone. He is hit by Al Harris. The ball pops loose. Incomplete pass. The Vikings settled for a field goal, but instead of leading 17-3, it was 10-3 at the half. The Trojans got the ball to start the second half and did what they had to do to stay in the game. Score. The play that got them in was the reverse to Dixon. Titus used some great downfield blocking to go 49 yards. Clem kicked the extra point, and Troy State had tied the game at 10 with 12.38 left in the third quarter. But Portland State came right back. On the next series, the Vikings struck when Crawford found Tim Corrigan, who went in for a score. The extra point gave the Vikings the lead again at 17 to 10, the last lead they would have. The Trojans took the kickoff and answered with a nine-play, 67-yard drive. Two big plays in the drive. Reginald Hutchinson fell on a Tony Jackson fumble at the 50 to keep the drive alive. From there, Mike Kelly made a great catch of a Turk pass that put the Trojans at the Vikings' 12-yard line. Four plays later, Turk went in from the one. Clem's point after tied the game at 17 with 6.08 left in the third quarter. A big defensive play for the Trojans came on the Vikings' next drive. On third and five from the 50, Crawford is stopped by Summerall, Blackwell, and Shane Lewis after a two-yard gain. That forces the punt. The Trojans took over at their 20. On the third and seven from the 23, Turk makes a tremendous 77-yard run for an apparent touchdown. But it is called back after the Trojans were called for clipping. Mike was credited with a 52-yard run. The ball was marked at the Portland State 40-yard line after the penalty. Turk was a little too tired after the run to play quarterback on the next play, so Godsey was called in. He gave to Dixon on the Trojans' third reverse of the game. This time, Titus gained 25 yards to the Vikings' 15. Turk came back in for the next play, which was another reverse, this time to Harris, who made a determined run for the end zone and got in. Clem's extra point came with 35 seconds left in the third quarter and put the Trojans ahead for good at 24 to 17. However, the Vikings weren't done. Johnson broke loose for a big gainer. Willie Banks made a touchdown-saving tackle at the Trojans' five-yard line. On the next play, Portland State tried to pass for the score, but Doug Mims stepped in and made an interception. Doug brought it back 23 yards from the one, and a potential game-tying drive had been thwarted. It looked like the interception took the final spark out of the Vikings. With time running out, Turk did something he had hoped would happen. His last play as a college football player was a touchdown run, but even Mike could not have predicted the manner in which it would be scored. It was a patented Turk tour, a snaking 51-yard scamper that came with 143 left in the game. Clem kicked his final extra point as a Trojan, and Troy State had won its second national championship in three years. Turk, who finished second of the voting for the Harlan Hill Award as the best player in Division II football, set a championship game record for rushing with 190 yards. The Trojans finished with a 12-1-1 record. Troy State University, NCAA Division II, football champions of 1987.